from our perspective, we have the Fed on hold for this year and like the Fed basically until the end of next year. And if rates are accommodative here, which we think they are, with the funds rate at 240, it's below the Fed's longer run dot. If policy is accommodative, financial conditions have eased, it sets the stage for better growth this year, but it means that rates are probably going to be remain range bound firmly into the second half of the year. Which, if you flip that and try and figure out what that means for equities, Eric, um, maybe good times ahead. Well, unless unless they're signaling that there's a lot less growth to come, right? Yeah, and that's perhaps what the equity market was saying by selling off after it initially had digested the news yesterday. We, we think that there's going to be short-term volatility in equities, that this isn't necessarily the starting bell for kind of that last late cycle, you know, big burst that may come. Mm -hmm. But we've got to get through a quarter of, you know, pretty negative year-over-year -year earnings comparisons and a lot of concern around that. Still some declining short-term information out of China and Europe and uh, emerging markets. So we think that this is probably a better story on the fixed income, um, EMFX side in the short term than perhaps for U.S. equities, where we've already seen a huge run. We're at fair value, we would say, on the U.S. equity market. So we're looking outside the U.S. for opportunity after this. You know, the one thing I would say, though, when you have the 10-year sitting at 2.5%, and you look at that as a relative comparison for where you can make money, yeah. I mean, even if we're talking about an earnings slowdown in profits, uh, even potentially negative, which I think the, the market had kind of factored a lot of that in. Right. Um, you look around and you think there is no alternative. That Tina trade is kind of back on, too. Well, certainly equities, but uh, and, and this could lead to some multiple expansion. Our view is that we're basically going to see flat multiples, 4% four, four ish earnings growth in the, in the S&P this year. Mm -hmm. Fed going this dovish sets the tone for perhaps a multiple expansion in the U.S. that could get you to high single digits for, for U.S. equity markets. But when you consider the pressure this takes off the dollar, um, the loosening of global financial conditions, we think this is an opportunity to now move to markets which are going to be more levered to kind of improving global growth in the second half of the year. And I guess the biggest reason for, or, or the biggest question behind all of this, and, and, and I'll ask you this, Jay, um, does the Fed know something we don't? Are they looking at growth? Are they looking at a slowdown in the economy? Or are they just kind of catching up where a lot of other people had already been last year? That's a question we've been getting from a lot of investors over the last sort of 12 to 24 hours. And I don't think they necessarily know something more um, than we see in the markets right now. But I think the other piece of the puzzle is that, and the, the chair said this yesterday, is it hasn't delivered on its inflation objectives in a symmetric fashion. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of dealing from a position of strength here. It's raised rates. The economy is weakened a bit, but is in okay shape. If it can stay on hold here and potentially sort of deliver on its inflation objectives, you know, being dovish right now is putting it in a position to do so. Yeah, we think the Fed's really shifting to a new framework, a new position after five to six years of kind of the, the exit of QE environment, which is really what they started doing first with the taper tantrum and then the subsequent policies. This is a new now framework going from inflation targeting to flexible Average price targeting, targeting, et cetera, and letting letting things overshoot. You could say they're trying to outdove the ECB and the BOJ, but we think it's much more of a, they've shifted to a new framework and they just kind of unspooled all of that more. If we never get back to where we were, balance sheet wise, is that normal? But, new is normal. That, but is that normal or does it show that we've somehow built up some systemic risk that, that we, we still are paying forward and we, we didn't really, you know, come to grips with it when it happened. Yeah, certainly there's risks that corporate debt are, you know, debt levels are rising, although frankly in the last, you know, three to six months, some of the, you know, three to 12 months, some of the corporate debt um, uh, standards are improving. The Fed can live with a, a larger balance sheet. Uh, you see Feldstein's piece? The debt crisis, com crisis is coming soon. I mean, he's warned before about, yeah. I guess he's not a new monetary, what's that, new monetary NMT, theory? He's know, not an NMT modern, guy. Modern you know, monetary. But this doesn't read very, this is frightening to, to read, but I mean, it's not new, but he's a pretty well-respected. We should have to him on. Well, when you look at the battery of excesses that you would normal, normally monitor to identify end of cycle, the only one that's really flashing red is aggregate corporate debt levels. Yeah. Now, the question is, does that catalyze an end of cycle event? And our credit team would say not yet, that that's still, some ways out, and in fact, on the margin, those levels have gotten, or the, the aggregate credit quality has gotten a little bit better lately. Jay, does the dollar strength stay capped now? Has, uh, has the Fed kind of matched the dovishness of elsewhere? 
We think it does. I think um, we are actually broadly sort of long the dollar versus a couple other majors right now, but from a tactical perspective. But looking ahead for the balance of the year, if the Fed's on hold, the ECB's on hold, it sort of takes the pressure off the dollar. And that was part of the problem last year. The Fed was tightening while the rest of the world was sort of struggling, which allowed the dollar to rally. And they're sort of taking that pressure off right now. Eric, just looking for risks out there, could the global growth slowdown be worse than expected? And if so, does that does that hurt the U.S. economy or, and U.S. equities, or again, not, not so much? Yeah, I think it does. And I, I think the risk is, is that, that the sh yes, the decline in global growth is worse than what people are, are forecasting. And we're going to probably see some prints on major economic indicators in the next couple months that would reinforce that notion. That's what the Fed's responding to, trying to solve some problems perhaps outside the U.S. Um, if that does become the case, then yes, that probably impacts U.S. risk assets. Um, we think, think the U.S. administration has less incentive to, to sign a trade deal sooner rather than later. That can put some pressure on, on China and, and markets. So there's plenty of short-term risk to keep an eye on.